Hey guys, remember to hit like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and leave a comment so I know what you really think about me. Enjoy! Hey guys, Venus here, back with more interactive horror stories. Today, the evil beneath the ground. You are a goth university student with no friends. You join a school trip to a lake and a forest narrative. If you decide to wander the in the forest at night, you will find bare footprints. Those are coming from a black hole with a ladder. You're a young university student who identifies as goth. Like, oh my god. You're a lonely person. People think you want to be alone, but in fact you couldn't find someone you felt affinity. I was so distant from you. Nobody you know listens to music that you love, like... Bahas, this mortal coil, the sisters of mercy, etc. You heard about a university field trip to a lake and a forest around it in autumn. There will be a picnic, also alcohol is permitted. You can bring your own drinks. You join the field trip. Not only maybe you could make some new friends, but you also love the nature, especially when it's a cold season. What? But of course you couldn't make new friends once again. During the two hours of bus travel, you found out that everyone other student who joined the trip were already friends. They simply ignored you. You also didn't approach them. As a result, all you could do during the bus trip was look outside the window or play games on your phone while you listened to their joyful la laughter. You have mixed feelings about this picnic by the lake. You can't feel yourself as part of the joyful youth who are enjoying the nature trip. After having a picnic barbecue, they played a game with the ball in which they formed a circle and tried not to let the ball touch the ground. Everyone participated in the game except for you. But you enjoyed the nature trip somehow. As said before, you loved the nature. You took pictures of the lake with your phone. You don't plan to post pictures anywhere though. And there's a huge forest near the pictures picnic area. You have always found pieces of in the green of the forests. Bleh. After the sunset, people began to light a campfire and drink. People around your age generally prefer beer, but you don't like it. You feel it overfills your stomach and causes nausea after two cans. Yeah, that's how alcohol works. Instead, you prefer a stronger drink. Today, you brought a bottle of red wine and a wine glass. They gather around the campfire while you drank your wine alone away from them. Mmm, fancy. A handsome guy brought his guitar from the bus and began playing it around the fire. While you have finished your second glass of wine, campfire and moon illuminate the darkness. There are about five hours for the picnic to end. You'll be going back to the city with buses. He's playing a calming song. You might join the group, but you also feel a strong urge to have a walk in the dark. I'll do the Boring one first. I'll I'll try to conform despite being goth. It's all about non-conformity, but whatever. You approach the group. Two girls notice you. They open a space for you to sit between them. One of them is blonde. The other is long, black hair. They wear colorful clothes, contrast with your black outfits. I could just leave, sit down, look, and get up and leave. Oh, that sounds funny. Uh, don't talk to them. My character's shy. You can stay out there as soon as I go to the forest. Stay. Nothing interesting happens in the rest of the day. You finish your bottle of wine. You drink a whole bottle of wine. When the time comes, you get on the bus and go back to the city. Yes, it's a lame ending. But at least you're still alive and human. Okay. I mean, this is probably why nothing interesting happens to me, because that's what I would do. Okay. Let's uh, get some of the other ones. You stand up and wander away from the picnic. You feel the call of the dark forest, so you walk along the path into the forest. The trees are high and still green. Maybe they stay green all season. You don't know. Your field is not biology. Despite loving the nature, you apparently can't identify an evergreen tree. Come on, come on, come on. The soil is white and muddy. It must have rained before your group arrived at the lake. You leave boot prints on the soil as you walk. There are no clouds in the sky. Full moon and stars illuminate this forest. There's not enough for your eyes. You turn on the flashlight on your phone. There's an app for it too. No shit. Every freaking phone 
has a flashlight on it now. I can't clearly see, but notice rabbits in the distance. Naturally, they run from you as they notice your presence. You begin to think that you might have gone too far from the picnic, but there's nothing interesting in the picnic area. You somehow feel like the darkness of the forest is your friend. Only friend. You continue on the forest path. After a few minutes, you notice footprints on the soil. They seem to belong to a human with bare, big feet. Probably a man. The prince crossed the path. Hmm. Huh? Huh? Follow him. You follow the footprints on the soil. They keep changing directions. You find yourselves an elevation. The prince stopped there. Whoever was walking, he didn't leave prince. Those you could follow anymore. He might have gone anywhere, as he didn't follow a single direction. You decide to go to the place where he comes from. After a long walk, you find yourself at a hole. There's a lid and long rope near it. The man clearly comes from this hole. His footprints prove it. When you hold your phone's light in the black hole, you see that there is a ladder inside the hole. You can't see the end of the hole from your position. As a curious and drunk boy, you feel strong urge to descend. Salavi. As you need to use your both hands to climb down, you put your phone into your jeans pocket, turning off the light. You start climbing down. After a few seconds, moon and stars above no longer illuminate what you see. You are in pitch black, and the ladder still continues. Finally, your feet touch the ground. You are so distant from the forest that you can't see the entrance of the hole from where you are. You carefully get on your own two feet. You can see nothing yet. Turn on the phone. The place where you are is made of concrete. There is a long corridor in front of you. It is narrow, about a meter wide. It is not very high. There are only a few centimeters between your head and the ceiling of the corridor. You smell a terrible odor. It's the mixture of uh, feces and something you can't quite understand. There are three doorless holes along the cor concrete corridor, making three rooms to discover. I can count, man. First room. There's an empty wooden coffin. A mirror hangs on the concrete wall. A bloody razor and a black whip stand in front of the mirror. In the mirror, you see the reflection and tear on your face. To be honest, if I walked in on that, I would just assume this is like an SMM place. Just saying. The place where you are is made of concrete. There is a long corridor in front of you. It is narrow, about a meter wide. It is not very high. There are only a few centimeters between your head and the ceiling in the corridor. You smell a terrible odor. Oh, all the same things I just read. You are shocked to find a chained woman in this room. The chain is tied to her ankle. She looks in her 40s, too weak. Her bones are noticeable and has pale skin with lots of scars. She's on her knees. She's naked. Her body is slightly hairy. Except for her pubic hair, which is quite hairy. Contrasting her hairy body, her head is shaved. She stinks! Not only the smell of feces, but also it looks like she wasn't washed for years. She screams as you point the light on her. Who are you? She doesn't answer your question, but yells with despair. Help me! He keeps me here! I try to save her. You crouch down to her tied foot. There is no way you can remove the bracelet from her ankle. You also notice that her pinky toe is missing. Ugh. Let me try to find the key. You try to leave the room, but something you don't understand happens. At the exit of the room, you hit something that wasn't visible in front of you. Yes, you saw something in front of you. You saw nothing in front of you, yet you hit something. You fall onto the floor, and an invisible force carries you and repeatedly smashes your head to the wall. You hear the woman screaming as you black out. When you wake up, you find yourself lying on the concrete floor in pitch darkness. By the smell, you understand you are in the same place. Whoever is keeping you captive, he stripped you, of all you from all your clothes. You're naked and cold. There's a gag in your mouth, so you can't shout and communicate with a woman. She might be gagged too. You stand up and try to walk away, but your ankle is tied with a chain. You can walk only in a chamber with one meter radius. Your foot touches a metal bucket. It's probably where he expects you to defecate. You lose all sense of time here. You wait for an unmeasurable time for something to happen. You're thirsty and hungry. Sometimes you hear your phone ring. It's in a different room. The piano melody is It's the Fear by Within Temptation, an erotic name for your situation. They probably notice that you are missing and tries to reach you. Especially your parents, they must have become mad. Of course, you can't answer the call. Okay. If your phone is on and phone calls can reach you, 
the cops can locate that. Like the fact that there's phone calls incoming means that you get a strong enough signal for GPS to work. That's how phones work. Finally, you hear footsteps. You hear your captor come into your room. You're unable to see anything. It takes your gag off. Apparently, there's no problem with seeing in the pitch dark. And you hear his voice. Drink. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Drink. It belongs to an old man. A dominant ordering voice. Oh, my God. Drink. Much better. You feel the tip of a bucket on your lip. Who are you? I am your new master. You better behave well. You are mine now. Now drink. Or I won't give you it once again. Is water what he is offering? You drink it. Not the best water you drink. It could be taken from the lake, but you have no other choice, it seems. After you drink enough, he puts a bucket on the ground. And brings something else to your lips. Eat! You are too hungry to refuse him. You allow him to put the thing in your mouth. It's meat, but raw. You never eat raw meat, meat, except for sushi. But now you chew it slowly. His rabbit, he says. You swallow the meat, despite how it disgusts you. After you eat all he gives you, he puts the gag in your mouth and leaves the room without saying another word. After a while, he comes back as you are lying on the floor. Stand up, he orders you. You get on your two feet clumsily. He grabs your body and you feel two sharp fangs on your neck. He starts draining your blood. And you understand the true nature of your captor? You have no idea how long you have been prisoner here. What was the true nature of the captor? You didn't tell me. You're mostly alone in the room, doing nothing with a gag in your mouth. He occasionally comes back to feed you. I'm to himself. Sometimes you hear loud sounds from the other room. He tortures the woman. She screams and begs him to stop. But he doesn't. You hear a whip hit the naked flesh of the woman. But for some reason, he doesn't harm you, only the woman. You haven't seen anything for a long time. You have no idea what he looks like. Sometimes you hear sobbing. But it doesn't belong to the woman. To the captor. He cries loudly for some reason. Some day or night, you can't figure out. He shows up and takes your gag off. I've done research about you. I've done everything about you. He says your name, shocking you, despite the fact that he has your phone and probably was able to find that out relatively easily. We have some common points. We both like the dark. We are both outcasts, lonely souls in this world of darkness. I will make you an offer only once, so make your decision wisely. I can make you an immortal like me, yes. But there's, there's more. Fine. You will no longer be in chains. You'll have a life or unlife in the dark, like you've always wanted. Or you can stay as immortal and wait for the day you will die here. As my prisoner. You had me an immortal, dude. Very well. Stand up. You stand up and allow your master to embrace you. He feels fangs on your neck once again, but this time it doesn't stop. Your whole blood gain drains. Soon you lose consciousness. You open your eyes. You find yourself lying in a wooden coffin, but this time you're able to see. There's an end. There isn't any single light source in the concrete room, but you see your environment as if you were wearing night vision goggles. You're wearing your old clothes and also gloves, so you can't see your skin. You've lost your hair. It's shed. Your old hair is on the coffin's part where you put your head on. You feel your face change too, but the most magnificent change is an unbearable thirst, but not for water. Welcome to a new start, my child. You hear his voice. You look around the room, but you can't see him. There are two coffins and a mirror in the room. They think that all kind can't be seen on the mirror. False! Take a look at yourself. You step outside the coffin and walk up to the mirror. You are in terror with what you see in the mirror. You don't carry, you don't carry human face anymore. Your skin is scales like a snake. Its color is like gray, almost white. Your ears are long. You have pointy tips. Your eyes are all red. You slowly open your mouth to see your sharp fangs. You scream, break down, cry in despair. Then you feel his hand claw to be exact on your shoulder. As he stands on your he stands on your back. Now you're able to see his hand is scaled like his skin. Look at me! He orders you, and for some reason you can't disobey your master. You involuntarily look at the mirror to see the immortal entity behind you. His body is tall, naked, and has a humpback. His skin is almost white and scaled, but his face is the ugliest thing you've ever seen. Is the embodiment of evils, torture, murder, rape, and envy. Envy for everything that's pretty fair. I will teach you everything I know. 
Your new and only now parent says with a hideous smile. The end. Okay. So there's the boring end where nothing happens. There's this end where you become a friggin' vampire. Let's see if there's an end where I do something good. So the third room, you see a chain tied to a wall has bracelets and there are two male buckets, they're both empty. No small male key, take the key. Okay. So go to the third room first, get the key, go to the second room. Uh, try to save her. You crouch down to her tied foot. With the key you got, you unlock the bracelet, she is free. You also notice that her pink toe is missing. Run with her. You hold the woman's hand and rush to the ladder. Your other hand holds your phone so they, you enlighten the corridor. As you reach the ladder, you feel something hit your stomach. You can't understand you saw some, nothing in front of you, but there's still something. Your phone falls on the ground. You can't see anything. The woman screams, Oh no! He came! He's also here! You feel something, grab you, smash head, you black out. Uh, so nothing really changes. Okay. So rescuing the woman does nothing. Cool. But I want to stay human this time. Suddenly you feel a sharp pain in your shoulders. You hear the loud sound of a whip. He whips you continuously, feeling zero empathy for the agony you feel on your basket. You could have been a predator like me. You chose to be a fuck toy. You are mine to torment. Do you understand, idiot? He shouts at you. He kicks you and leaves you sobbing on the floor. You do nothing but hope that sweet death will come soon. But it never comes. Okay. So either absolutely nothing happens, you are tortured for all eternity, or you come, become some weird blizzard vampire. Spooky! 